a couple of things now. Uh, the next thing I have to do is change the shaft uh, seal. So getting the old seal out, you're never going to actually get it out without damaging it. You've got to, um, because it's pressed in hard against the uh, uh, face here, the only way to get it out is to actually get a screwdriver. So just get in behind it. And out it comes. There you go. Having cleaned it up inside, uh, I now use a little bit of oil on the new uh, seal. Um, and uh, that just helps it go in. And the trick is just to get it in nice and square. So you want to, you want to push it in nice and square and flat so you don't damage it. And the way to do that is with a piece of wood and then you can tap it. So something big and flat on there. It's metal around the edge here and then the bit that does the sealing is this in here. And the metal sits slightly proud of the seal, so as long as you've got a thing across the top there that bridges all of that, you can, you can tap it down nice and square. For this bit, I've just got a very hard surface and I'm using a drift here. Um, this is uh, just a piece of aluminium. And uh, the idea is you want to get the drift as big as possible so that it's nearly, I haven't got one that's quite big enough It'd be nice if it was fitted that hole perfectly and then you could just locate it and just tap it and, fin and move it that final millimetre. But instead I'm going to pushing it right to the edge here. So it's right to the edge there and then I'm just gently going to tap it down because if I go inside it like that I'll damage the seal. I don't know if you can see the difference between that and that there. So it's just going to sit on the edge there. I'm just going to lightly tap it. feel it moving and just go all the way around that's gone home I can feel that that's gone home there and just keep turning it round because and keep moving it keep going to the edge that's it that's good and then if you look around you can see now it's recessed so just turn it all the way round and check that it has gone all the way through, which it has. Yeah, it's gone down. And there you go, you can see the difference now. That oil way is now clear. There you go, you can see through, and it's clear there as well. So it's just getting it down that last millimeter, and now the face inside is making contact. So there you go, that's how to correctly fit that seal. The next bit is you want to get a good seal between um, this component here. So you need to put silicon just on this flange here and on here. So obviously clean up the surface and put silicon on there. Don't put loads on there though because you don't want to uh, block this little oil way like we found earlier. So that's the next thing. Okay, so what I've done is put a, a bead of silicon around here, but I've, I've kind of moved away from the oil way so that when it's when it gets squished it won't sort of block that up and again I've done the same now I've moved away from the oil way um, and I've also put plenty of oil inside there and I've also put oil around the shaft there just turned it and put oil around the shaft so that um, when the two go together the seal will go on without any problem the next thing is to um, lubricate this uh, this bearing uh, on this shaft so it slides on, up and down the shaft here quite nicely so I'm going to run uh, some uh, grease into that groove there and put some on the forks here and just on this area there with that done uh, the next thing is I'm just going to um, wrap this like that lightly just to keep the dust off it until I'm ready to put it on the car um, and just to protect it really with an elastic band there you go good morning folks right the latest thing is um, I've got to remove the bearing from the center there it's a bit rough <clears throat> so um, I went to go and get a slide hammer 
they're really expensive it's silly really for a tool that you hardly ever use and will just sit in some drawer somewhere and I'll probably forget where I put it and you know next time I come to use it which will be you know hopefully a long time from now so I've made this um, this thing here I've made this thing just out of a piece of rod ideally it should be a round piece of rod but I didn't have one and um, the idea is is to hook it in behind the bearing I'm not gonna bore you with the details other than the fact that that is hooked in there and I put a, a hole in it so that I can push a screwdriver through like that the thing is this slide hammer the slide hammer that I wanted to buy has all sorts of different attachments and things like that okay that's not working it's it's rounding it off okay plan b this is not very elegant really but look this is a one-time deal only all I want to do is get this bearing out so what I've done is packed it with, <laughs> with drills to press the hook up into the corner of the bearing. Well that does feel like something's moving. Doesn't look like it is there. Yes! Ah. You don't want to see how I did that. Or do you? Okay, <laughs> look at this. Oh yes, in the end what I did is I actually clamped a vise to the bar itself. And uh, basically um, just hammered the side of the vise. And obviously with more mass on the end it had more clout behind it. So here's the latest. I've been busy um, cleaning up the plugs and things like that and just um, taking them apart, cleaning them out, putting them back, reorganising them. They were in a bit of a mess. They're sort of all over the place. Um, and I've cleaned the bell housing. Um, I've tried to avoid uh, getting... I've bunged this up with paper with tissue to stop anything going in these holes here. So being very careful not to get any uh, grit or anything like that in the oil ways and the bearing, of course, which is in there. Um, and um, also just being quite careful when I cleaned it up. I didn't go crazy. Um, I've just tried to get it looking a little bit respectable. And then to finish off, I just put some lube around the oil seal there. Oh, incidentally, I cleaned it with the with these bolts actually in so that I didn't get any contamination in the threads here. So um, that's the other thing. And now I've taken them out and I've just got all the oil off them and everything. So I'm ready to fit uh, the center bearing. So the trick to doing anything like this when you're putting in a bearing is you do not want um, to strike the center of the bearing at all when you're drifting it in because otherwise you put strain on the balls and you dent the inside of the race and shorten its life if not trash the bearing just as soon as you put it in the trick is to put it in from the outside so find something like a socket is pretty good that goes and it only strikes the outside leaving the inside free so i've cleaned out this hole and i've just put a little tiny bit of grease in and i'm just going to press this now just gently tap it in that feels nice I can feel it um, if you put your fingers against the crankshaft you can actually feel the bearing going in it also steadies you and you can see that I'm hardly tapping it Still moving. Now it's starting to sound solid. Hear that? That sounds a lot harder and that's gone in. And that hasn't touched the centre, haven't even touched the centre. I've also marked the flywheel. Um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, there's my little marker, as I explained, just there. 
So what I've got to do is just get it on there and line it up. The other thing is they're little sensors here. You've got to be very careful not to damage them. Now what I'm going to do, before I thread lock these, I'm just going to put them all in and uh, make sure they all, they're all the right orientation, of course. And I should just tweak them. Um, you know, just a little bit of torque on them. Just to make sure that they all go in nice and all the threads are clean. They should be. And then I shall take them out one by one and thread lock them. Yeah, the thread lock I'm using is uh, a medium strength 243 blue. Um, it uh, works in the presence of oil. Obviously you want everything to be kept clean, but this is a good sort of general purpose one. Spoke to Ferrari, they, they use this one too. So I, I've got 2700 and I've got 2400 and there's all sorts of other ones, but um, uh, this apparently is the one to use. So there you go. Actually, you know, I don't want to put loads and loads and loads of thread lock on there because you, know, you want to be able to take it out. It is, would be an absolute nightmare if you shared these off and couldn't get them out. Um, yeah, so that is not, you know, which is why I would not, I don't want to use the red uh, stuff, which is the high torque stuff. And uh, I think Ferrari are probably in agree, uh, the, the Fer at least the Ferrari garage where I am are in agreement too. They just used the, they used the blue. So. 60 pounds is what we're looking for, 62 to be precise. And that's 50 on there. Then the one opposite, 50. And I'll just take it down to 60 now. 62, that's 60 and a bit, 62. As well. There we go, 60 plus a bit. Yep. So I'm just going to nip around them, check I haven't missed any, I'm sure I haven't. No, that's 60. Now I'm just going to go around like clockwise because I know they're all done up. So, yeah. When you're going diagonals, you know, <laughs> you know, you never know. You might have missed something. You might have got the wrong diagonal. As unlikely as it seems, you know, you might have got it wrong. So it doesn't hurt to just go around like this. But yeah, they're all 60. It doesn't hurt to double check everything. I guess that's why aeroplanes have a co-pilot. <laughs> the flywheel, um, sorry, the clutch plate, uh, fibre plate is sided. So uh, the side that goes towards the flywheel, uh, i.e. goes engine side. Well, basically <laughs> you put it like that. So I don't know if you can see, it's more proud that side than it is that side. So that side is the side that goes towards the flywheel, i.e. it goes on uh, whereas you'll see in a minute. So it goes like that. So I'm trying to do this backwards and upside down with the camera, but that's how it goes together. Uh, the old one was marked, this one isn't. So bearing in mind that everything that faces me, uh, I mark with a red dot. That way, at the last minute, I can't mess it up. So I'm just gonna mark it with a red dot, and then I know that the red dots face me. And now folks, for the moment we've all been waiting for, Enter stage right the clutch. Um, it's uh, I don't have a clutch alignment tool, so I'm using a, uh, an extension, a little extension, which I'm just going to hang the clutch on for now, like that. Now you can see the old dot comes in handy because at a glance I can see it's the right way round. The next thing is to put the pressure plate on. 
and I've got my little bolt standing by. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do them up completely because I'll explain in a minute. So I'm just going to put it on. So there's a peg here and there's a hole there. And basically you've got to shift that and line it up. Uh, well, it's not burning my arm on the light. There we go. There and there. And then all I want to do is just get in a bolt. So anyway, I'm now taking this out. And because it's only loosely done up with two bolts, I can push this around. See, I don't you can see it's moving. So the idea is I'm going to look straight down the barrel, adjust it, and I'm going to nip it up a little bit tighter. And then I'm actually going to offer the gearbox, uh, sorry, the bell housing assembly to it so that it will all line up nice. Because if you tighten all this down and then try and put the thing on, you really got to muscle it around to try and get it because this pressure plate is pressing. Once it's done up, this pressure plate presses the friction plate. So if you leave it just slightly loose, you can put the bell housing on and then it really has lined up and then you tighten it down. So that's how I do it. Uh, in an ideal world, you'd have a shaft, a spline shaft, a Ferrari one that you just press in there and then you just tighten it up and then you put the box on. Of course, it would line up. But of course, I don't have a spare Ferrari shaft lying around, so uh, I have to do it this way. I'm lining it up just by resting on the edge there and I can move it around. I don't know if you can see it moving like that. And there's quite a bit more pressure on there now, so I can, I think that's about the right sort of pressure for when I. Um, push the gear box, um, the bell housing on to line it up absolutely as it should be. What I'm doing here is I've got the light right in front of my face so it's right in line with my eyesight because when you move it to one side you cast shadows. I don't know if you can see that, look, you cast shadows and it gives you an optical illusion as to whether it's center or not. So by having the light right in front of your face you're looking straight down the barrel as it were and it's lit as flat as possible, almost like a ring flash. I think that that is not bad, but you know, I'm gonna do the gearbox, uh, the bell housing trick, and then it will be sorted. Here I have my lovely spruce bell housing, and there are, I haven't put any of the O rings on or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is just offer it up to make sure that spline is in line. Um, this is going to be fun, trying to film this whilst keeping the light in there. Right, so it's lined up and it's in. I'm going to show you how I did it. Obviously it's got to come off again once, it's, um, once I've lined up that clutch plate. Um, really, you've just got to get everything out of the way. The crankcase breather, I didn't take the oil cooler off. Um, I just um, moved all the, the crankcase breather, which kept falling in the way and I didn't notice it. And um, with the engine cover open, it lets light in from the top and then you can see what you're doing, which always helps, doesn't it? Um, so I'm just um, now, uh, I've taken the cover off and I'm just gonna turn this. There you go, see it lock? I don't know if you saw that, but that was to engage the spline. And then hopefully I can just wiggle it and it should line the clutch up. That's the idea anyway. So I'm going to move that out of the way and just push it home. And hopefully then it will all be lined up. Well, it will be lined up. Um, and then, and in fact, it has gone straight on. So actually, you know, <laughs> that was lined up. I put a, um, I just went up in the engine bay and uh, just look, put a little bit of leverage on there gently and it's, it's, it's off now, so that's fine. Amazing how it gets hung up, isn't it, on stuff, um, even when it's clean. So, just pull it straight off, he says. <laughs> this oil cooler is such a pain. Ah, there we go. It's such a pain. Right, so we're straight off. There's a thread down here as well, which you've got to be careful of as well. It'd be better if it was a, a bolt, actually. So, 
and now my fibre plate is now lined up. Oh yes. So now uh, we tighten. Um, doing it a little bit at a time evenly. And then after I've done that, I'll show you exactly the problem I have. You know, just doing it cross rays for now is fine. So the next thing to do is to save time, I put all these um, these nuts in, a uh, bolt, sorry. And you just pinch it up more now because uh, this is all lined up nicely. Um, and uh, these have got spring washers on, so they are, you know, they lock themselves. The trick is, just give them a couple of turns each. Don't don't do one up. You just want to gently pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. You know, you don't want to try and do it all at once on one. Just do little bits, just a, just like a couple of turns, and keep going round until they all gradually tighten up. That's that. Um, uh, all I've got to do now is put my O-rings on and some silicon round here, which I'll show you next. So next up, you've got three little O-rings. That goes in there, okay? And you can fix that in with a little bit of silicon. And then the big one goes there. And uh, the other one, the medium-sized one, goes on the Oops, there it is. The medium sized one goes on the uh, engine side. And I'm going to put a little bit of silicon there just to hold them in place. And again, because we're not at home to Mr. Cockup, I'm going to uh, put silicon all around that, that face as well. Okay, so there you can see a little bit of silicon on there, a little bit of overkill. Obviously, as long as it doesn't go inside, you don't want any going inside the thing, but the outside is fine. And there's the other O-ring down there. So uh, it's ready to go together. Damn, I wish you guys had seen me do that. That went on really rather easily. Um, <laughs> with the camera out of the way, I can just get in there and get it straight on. The key is to doing this is obviously make sure that that remaining stud, so you've got the shaft and then you've got those a shorter stud and a longer stud. It's the longer stud, just make sure that that doesn't fail. And the trick is to get it on the shaft first and then you can rotate it, but make sure you're clear of the longer stud. And I'll show you now from the inside to check your O-rings and everything are okay. So having executed that little maneuver, you just want to make sure that your O-rings are okay and that they're still seated. There's the little one and there's the big one. And and the other one is down there. You have to take my word for it. It's okay. You can't see it. It's just where that shiny spigot is, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. Right. So I'm just going to push it on, and uh, that sounded like it was on, wasn't it? So I'm going to go hammer, and just this end, tap it. And it should. Yep. So I'm going one side and then the other side. So what I'm doing now <clears throat> is putting my fingers around here. I just want to make sure that this is seated against that against the uh, engine block. There's no gap, and the reason for that is I'm, I don't want to pull this up on the studs, and you know it not be there. If it's not there already, then there's a problem. You're not. Um, needing to pull this up on the studs. Uh, I can see that the silicon has compressed here. Yep, it has made contact. There is no gap. That's good. So now we are free to um, bolt it up. But what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't actually um, not get it fully on and then decide to pull it on with the bolts. You shouldn't need to do that. If you're needing to do that, then something's wrong and uh, you may break something so make sure that it's flat square and it's made contact all the way around so there you go doesn't it look posh um 
that's um, I've put it all back with lots of lovely yummy stainless steel um, the nice thing about stainless obviously it doesn't rust but you can't use it on anything structural uh, as in uh, suspension or anything like that because stainless steel is more brittle than normal uh, steel and so if you use our suspension components uh, your suspension might collapse uh, but for holding on a bell housing or any ancillary bits and pieces it's absolutely fine so there you go it's all um, bolted up now and um, all the wiring's uh, connected uh, for the sensors on the engine uh, the crankcase breather is back in and um, even the uh, slave cylinder for the clutch is connected I didn't want to bore you with all of that because you know it's pretty straightforward. So the next thing is to do the gears. Okay guys, before we get all excited and put it back together, I thought I'd do a little test to make sure that the clutch is disengaging. Um, so the clutch is disengaged and I can't turn it obviously because that's the engine that I'm trying to turn. So darling, can you disengage? Okay, just go to the floor and there you go. So there's a the clutch released. Okay, and then let it out. Yep, let it out. And there we go. So that's a very quick, easy way to, um, to uh, check that the clutch is releasing fine, and it is. Okay, folks, we're definitely on the home straight now. Um, here's all my uh, uh, gears ready to go back on. They're all nice and clean. Uh, some new packets with the new sacrificial uh, nuts. Um, so the only thing to now do is lubricate the bearings with some gear oil and uh, put them into place. But first we have to put our little circlips on if you remember, so we'll do that first. The circlip is that little chap there and it has to go over there, I don't know if you remember that. There's our circlip and right the way down in here is a little ridge, a little ring, you can see it. Um, let me move the light and you may be able to see it. There you go, you can see that little ring. It's going to snap on t into that groove there. But there is that circlip. You can see the gap. If I get my two screwdrivers, in fact, I can keep my hands up the way and you can see it snap into the groove. So I'm just going to wiggle it gently um, and evenly. And it should just snap into that groove as soon as it's, as soon as it's there. There you go. There we go, it snaps in, you see. What I'm doing is I'll know it's in the groove because I can hold it there, look, and rotate it, you see, and it stays, the gap stays there. And that's quite important because you know, a little thing like that, if you get it wrong, um, the bearing will um, run the back of the, um, run the back of the case. So the ball, the, the race of the bearing will run the back of the case and will chew up all the metal and do all kinds of damage just because that little circlip isn't in so it's quite important the next thing is that ring which goes smooth side out and that just goes onto that and you push that on again you'll know it's in place because what it does is I don't know if you can see that there's the back with my screwdriver, with the tip of my screwdriver, that is the back of the case, okay? The bearing should not run against that. But that is the back of the case. What the screwdriver is on now, this is not the case. This is actually the outer part of the bearing, which stays pressed into the case. And it's not worn because there's no, uh, I've looked at it, there's no um, pitting or anything like that. How it's got to be is that's the back of the case and that back of the case should be in line with that thing we've just pushed in this kind of shim so if the shim sits forward from the back of the case you haven't located it onto the circlip it has to be level with it okay the next thing guys is the bearing and as you can see that has to be the outer race because there isn't an, it's an open bearing now the thing to bear in mind is that it's the balls are more visible that side than that side where the case, the outer uh, race is uh, a thinner gap. See, it's a thin gap there and a wider gap there. So it goes that way round. I'm doing it in a hurry because I've packed it full of oil and I want it to 
uh, the oil to go into the race itself so I, I just want to get it in there and that just pushes straight in and there you go you can see and here's our wonderful homemade circlip pliers with the little grooves that I cut in I don't know if you remember and that I'm going to try not to get my hand in the way again I hope it doesn't fire across the, the garage but uh, or outside just give it a squeeze and pop it in There you go, you see it snapping? There you go. And, ag and again, to check that it's in, I mean, you can see it's in actually, but to check it's in, you can rotate it round and everything. But that's in, so that's all good. So now, it's the cock. And aren't you glad that you painted a red dot on it? So you can see which way round it is, instantly. And like I say, if you sort of stick to procedures like that, it makes life so much easier because you know at a glance um, you know which was the right way so there we go you push our cog on there it's gone home and uh, then we're ready for our middle one let's just show you it in context so there it is in context so now we're going to just pop the middle one in next we want plenty of our friends mr. gear oil in here so I just get it in a little cap and I tip it in and then run it, run it around there you go and that makes sure that that race is nicely lubricated and a little bit actually sits behind it now I've put plenty of oil again into that thrust race there I don't know if you can see it there you go that thrust race so I put plenty of oil into that so now we just offer up the gears and twist and it slides in okay so there you go and again our red dot it makes it nice and easy doesn't it it's nice because you can see it an instant like I say I keep going on about that but you can see it an instant you know if you get distracted go off and make a cup of tea or something and then come back and you know things can happen you can end up putting things the wrong way and then you don't know why they don't go together or whatever so doing it that way you, you know you can instantly see it's it's foolproof really so this nut this keeper nut has to go on the bottom there but look at the state of the one that came off it that is as it was I haven't broken anything there or anything like that that's how it came off and in fact because there were no tabs left someone actually center punched it there um, to make to kind of fix it <laughs> so just rubbish isn't it terrible what some people do so here's my nice new one which I've oiled the threads on and um, that's just going to wind onto there nice and easy and then we shall torque it up to the correct uh, torque um, oh first of all though I must lock the gears with a rag so just go and get a rag so 140 pounds 145 pounds in fact 145 is right at the top of the scale 150 is the maximum so let's uh, let's go for it and I hope you can see it now bearing in mind if you push down rather than trying to pull up, rather than trying to pull up that way, if you push down, you're putting your weight on it, so you're letting gravity do the work for you. And uh, that makes life a lot easier and gives you more control, rather than trying to pull up, because if you slip, you hit yourself in the face. <sighs> Pushing hard into it, you don't want that tool to slip. It's well and truly located on. But pushing down is the safest way. <sighs> you actually feel it um, bite that last bit. So you feel it kind of, as you go, you feel it turn and you feel it kind of nip up. So that is done. Yep, that's it. Okay. That was easy, wasn't it? So now the next thing is to drift that over like that. So you put a drift in there and you tap it. And uh, I'm going to try and do one so you can see. If you use a nice big hammer, it gives you a lot of control. If you use a little one, you've got to bash away at it. The other thing is you do not want to hit that. So otherwise you're in a whole load of trouble. Don't hit the studs or anything like that. Be very careful. 
if you've got a big hammer you don't have to you don't have to whack it from a distance you can just tap it like that like i say it gives you a lot of control there you go once you get a little indent going it, you're there you know because the punch doesn't move around and you're you're locked it in right now the other side okay there's the bottom one all peened over now that's all done but i don't know if you re folks remember the top one was loose um, even though um, the thing that saved it from coming undone was in fact these tabs and in fact this was so loose look when i drifted the tabs away it actually can just come undone with your fingers look at that it's shocking isn't it um, but that's just um i think that that is a torque related thing i don't think anyone's had that off because that nut is intact and it's the same procedure again oiled threads sorry you can't see it very well but the threads are oiled and um i'm going to put some oil just down the back of the nut as well so oil threads and it's 144 pounds 145 into that as well and surprisingly it's the same as the other one and there they are don't they look lovely they look like little jewels um anyway uh that's all been done so now all i have to do is uh add silicon around the edge all the way around the edge and put the timing case back on and it's worth bearing in mind that when you peen these over do not try and hammer it really into that groove because the edge of that um carcelation or whatever you would call it that indent is quite sharp and if you hammer it in there you can actually cut the metal on the nut and that will cause it to fail and let go so you defeat the whole object of it all you've got to do is just pinch it in so don't try and be too neat and you know get it right in you don't want to do that because it will cause it to fail you just literally put it in a little bit it's a small detail but it's definitely worth noting right so i've now applied a little bit of lube around there well gear oil basically and um, I've also put a little bit in the timing case as well sorry not it's not a timing case but it's a case isn't it um, silicon all around there in the usual way and uh, pop it straight on there we go Okay, all the lovely stainless steel bolts and, and nuts are on and with the little washers. Um, when you tighten it up, uh, just do it in an X pattern. It's the same as doing a cylinder head. So you do that one, then you go to this one, then you go to this one in an X, then you go to that one. See, so it's da, 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 da. Okay, and then you can go out to that one or that one and then out to this one. And out to this one, out to this one, and that's it. And don't do them up tight because um, they don't need a lot. They just need to be nipped up, that's all. You do them up really tight, you'll strip them out. So you just pinch them, that's all that's needed. I mean, I'm hardly putting any pressure. Look, you can see, if you can see my hand is right in on the center of the socket so and even then i'm not exerting i'm probably exerting as much as i can holding it there on the socket so you're not you know you're not putting a lot of torque through it because they're only little little studs they don't take a lot and it won't take a lot to strip them out i know i keep going on about this but they are the aluminium's very old on this and it's quite soft actually, I'm quite surprised how soft it is, um, you know, relative to uh, Lotus, which the alloy seems a lot, um, a bit better, dare I say. So how do you fill it full of oil? Um, I'll just quickly show you, it's pretty obvious really, because uh, you saw me drain it. You make sure that the drain plug is in, you undo the drain plug that is up behind there, at the back of the, gear, uh, at the, back of the um, uh, uh, gearbox and diff. So you undo that, that's gonna be your overflow point, okay? So it's gonna overflow from there. Then you undo 
the one on the top of the timing case here and you can fill it through the cascade of gears because it fills through there goes down to the bottom and it goes straight through and into the gearbox and when it fills up it overflows so that is how you do it it's very very simple so you only have two drain plugs out the bottom ones stay in that one stays in the other one stays in the one high up which would you would normally fill from you don't bother that's your overflow so there we go it's all uh, all done all in and um, all I've got to do is put the wheel arch liner in and uh, that's it we're finished um, if you wanted to know what that is that's my uh, vacuum tank the um, the old dog food tin thing uh, I've made it out of a, a, a polycarbonate biscuit tin I don't know if you remember I actually made these in uh, rubber to seal the ignition packs as well I'm thinking of um, putting in a flat floor pan in here to stop all the muck getting up all onto the engine and everything um, I did the same with my Aston Martin and it works really well so um, I'm going to extend the floor pan I think uh, around the rear and at the front to try and keep everything sort of keep the weather off of everything anyway so that's that's it from there it looks rather nice doesn't it as you can see I've also um, cleaned up the engine again and uh, hopefully this time it will, it'll stay that way once I install my flat uh, floor pan. Anyway folks, thanks for watching. Uh, next thing is the test run. So uh, yeah, thank you very much.